Hi, I'm Serena Browse, and I'm your host for the Pottery Channel. Welcome back. We're here for another show. Uh, we're glad to have you. I'd like to remind everyone that if you want to say something about what you see, give us ideas, that you can always reach us by sending an email to info at thepotterychannel.com. Check us out on the internet at www.thepotterychannel.com. And if you just want that personal touch and you want to reach out and tell us what you think, you can always reach us at 336-460-0544. Now, we're coming to you from Ashburn, North Carolina. We have a great show for you. We have some beautiful pottery, some of new styles you haven't seen before. And we've got with us today, I want to thank you for being here, Turn and Burn Pottery. And we have David and Deborah Garner. How are y'all this evening? We're doing, doing great. great. Doing Wonderful. great. Good Glad to be, to be here. here. Oh, we're thrilled to have you. You've got some beautiful artwork for us. I always say artwork because um, that's what it is. It's individual. It's unique, as we always remind everyone. You uh, won't have the exact same thing because it's handmade, and that makes it unique and special. So tell us a little bit um, about your shop and where it is and... and uh, Go over all of that. Okay. <laughs> well, our shop is in downtown Seagrove. We're right in town, real easy to find. We're in uh, a building that used to be the office for the lumber yard in Seagrove many years ago. And we've been there 30 years now. Wow. 30 years. And, um, <laughs> it, it seems like just a couple to me, but we've been there 30 years now. A lot of experience there. Yeah. Now, our shop is not far from the one and only stoplight in Seagrove. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wanted to find you, if they can find Seagrove, you can find them. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, and, and we've got the number and the email up for everyone. Uh, dbgarner1 at, and I'm not going to embark mail. Yeah, embark mail. There you go. Uh -huh. That is dbgarner1 at embarkmail.com. And the phone number is 336-873-7381. Now, if, if they want to, uh, they're coming through the area, and they're going to be in, you know, central North Carolina, how can they find you? Is it, what's the best way to send you an email, give you a phone call, get directions, find out your hours? What can we do? We're easy to find. We're, we're right in town. There's over 100 shops there, but uh, you come to, come to downtown Seagrove, it's right in the center of the state. Okay. Almost exactly the geographic center of the state. And if they want to, to come visit you, they can give you a call, find out your Thank hours, you. yep. get any specific directions sure. they need. Yep. And I'm sure you'd love to see people come by because what we're giving you today is just a small sampling of everything that they do and everything that they have in their shop. Mm -hmm. We've got some representation of different styles, but um, you certainly will find it a treat to find out just what all you're missing that we can't possibly show you today. We'll show you a, a good deal, but you can also see a little bit more by going to their website. And why don't you go ahead and give us the address to find it's, you there. It's uh, turnandburncoppottery.com. Very easy and simple mm -hmm. to find. Very easy. Turn and burn, right? Turn and burn. I think that's a clever title. Whenever I first heard it, I went, that makes sense. You, it turns and then you bake it, so well, it's a burn. So. Traditionally, that's what it's been called in Seagrove. You, you know, instead of throwing fire, it's always been called turn and burn. We turn the pots and we burn the pots. And we've had a lot of people stop in our shop and they've, they've said, I like your name, and that's why we stopped. And then they want to know, how did you come by your name? And I think that's an interesting story because uh, 35 years ago, I suppose, David was working for Mr. Ben Owen, and uh, he had he went into a little little store nearby for lunch and he had clay and glaze all over his overalls and this elderly woman looked at him and said i see you've been turning and burning and it stuck in his head and he the said light bulb goes he off said here. you know when i get my own shop i know what i'm gonna name it turn and burn pottery mm -hmm. so anyway about five years after that i suppose that's when we opened so and that, that stuck with you, and that's how sure. you got the name. Mm -hmm. As they would say, history is made. Yep. Isn't history it? is made. That's right. <laughs> well, that's right. we've done some talking, so let's, let's show some pottery here. Let's right. show some pieces. Our first item up is a plate 
and this is item TB001 and it is a plate and inside says the Lord is my shepherd and it's got um, uh, the morning glory the morning glory mm -hmm. in there and it's done up in a nice federal blue and accented with sort of a creamy uh, white edge it's not a bowl white it's a very earthy color the whole bowl is a very earthy very um, for lack of another word homey nice mm -hmm. and cozy and this is beautiful to put on an, an eel eel and let's try that again let's try it's it again. A, uh, <laughs> and, like uh, an easel an <laughs> easel that's the word i'm trying to get out like an easel and to set it up as decoration in a kitchen mm -hmm. or sure. a dining room um but it's also very functional yeah also that's what i was going to ask you can use it you can use it you can put this into a preheated oven uh also microwave and dishwasher and uh so it is dishwasher safe yes oh, ma'am so. very good absolutely uh this is a nice deep plate so this would be good for uh if you mm -hmm. want to do individual servings of not necessarily pastries, but actually like shepherd's pie type things sure, where you've got sure. casseroles. Okay. This is TB001. It's a pie plate, $38. And again, that number is 336-873-7381. Okay. And our next item is a very similar item with irises in the center. It's another plate. And... This has got more artwork in, in the frame that the other was words. So how do, how do you get this in there? Because I can feel the texture in it as I rub my hands across it, that it's not smooth and under, it is under glaze, but I can feel the texture. Well, the way we do that is, first of all, I'm the one that does all the artwork in the pottery shop. And after the plate is turned on the wheel, this blue in here is like a slip that's brushed on. And then after maybe a day, it's got to be a little bit dry, I'll use like a little wire loop tool and carve through the top layer and it brings out the uh, background layer. The technique is called scraffito. So it's, uh, and it's something that you see a lot in Seagrove as far as that goes, that technique is used a lot. And the depth of this plate is approximately two and a half inches, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit better than that. TB002 is a pie plate with flowers, $38. Now, to do this technique, you say you do all the, the artwork. How long would a piece like this take to create? Well, you know, you, you're, you're going to figure at least a couple of weeks, but part of that is the drying time. So, so the, how long does the artwork inside, like per piece, take you to do that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of the iris uh, design, just like the dogwoods and all. Yeah. You know, with practice, of course, you, you get faster and better. And uh, I, can, I can do one pretty quick. Well, that's because you've done so many that's of That's exactly them. right. And, and it's so used to it. And For I, 30 years, I mean, you pick up speed after <laughs> <laughs> You better pick up some speed after right. 30 years. And I was noticing, and on the bottom, I see that we have uh, a signature for the turn and burn in mm -hmm. Seagrove, and you also have a Bible verse and a fish on the bottom. So mm -hmm. you want to tell us what that represents for you. Okay. Well, you know, we're Christians. We're not... Um, we use it as a way to get the Word of God out there. A lot of times people ask us, what, what is the scripture? And we're glad to tell them. Uh, we've had a lot of unusual things happen with that over the years. Um, it's been a real good tool for us. It's been a real good identifying mark for our shop. Okay. And we do a lot of different designs in them. Uh, Deborah does uh, real pretty hummingbird designs and dogwood yeah. blossoms and lighthouses, a lot of different Dragonflies. things. Dragonflies. Dragonflies oh, wow. are very popular. And those, I was going to say, they're very popular yeah. now. Oh, yes. Nice. Hand to this. And, um, and the best thing about them, though, is to use them to cook in. You know, people oh. really enjoy using them. Oh, and, and I would say these bake, because I know pottery oh, yeah. bakes evenly, yeah. and with it makes a very pretty dish. And then as you've eaten the food out of there, you're treated to the design in the bottom as it's as you, as the different pieces have come out of the food, you actually mm -hmm. begin to see mm -hmm. the pottery itself. So, uh, but it is 
dishwasher safe, it's oven safe, preheated is best. And well, I mean preheated meaning you don't have to put it in a cool oven and bring up the temperature. It can go into a 450 degree oven. Uh, I'm, that's true for our pottery. Now some pottery that you buy has to go into a cool oven and bring up the temperature, but not with ours. So you can already have it preheated because mm -hmm. a lot of dishes that you cook want it to be preheated so you don't have to take any consideration for the pot or the pan and the plate. It, it can withstand that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You just wouldn't want to put a, something frozen in it and put it in a hot oven. It's too much thermal shock. Yeah. Um, but really the only thing you need to preheat an oven for is bread. Mm -hmm. So. But definitely. Cookies, pizza. Yeah, bread. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds like the voice of experience. Uh, pizza. Pizza. <laughs> We've got another item coming up, and this one is very different. This has a fish mm -hmm. design around it. Now, what's the coloring on this referred to as? It's, it's a blue that we do with a, a mineral, a rutile. Mm -hmm. And a rutile is a form of iron. Um, and we, we wood fire this piece, so the ashes from the, from the wood fire are building up on the glaze, on the pot, as we're raising the temperature. And then as it gets white hot, it gets up to 2400 degrees, the ashes are melting into the glazes and altering the glazes. So we can get some real unique looks with that. And the same glaze will look different in different areas of the kiln and different thicknesses and different amounts of wood ash that land on the, on the pot. And I'm going to ask our camera person to, to hold it right that tight, and I'm going to shift the piece so that you can see the the fish on it, and you can see this is the design as it goes up. There's about, well, I think there's about four fish on this one. There might mm -hmm. be three. And then also I'm going to, if you hold it right there, I'm going to take and turn this, and hopefully turn it where you can see that all the way down inside of it is also glazed. So this would be something you could use uh, as a flower vase. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also use it utensil for utensil jar. Utensil jar. Um, this is TB003, and it is a wood-fired utensil jar, $45, and that is dbgarner1 at embarkmail.com or 336-873-7381. Now I know that you've got fish on this and I know you do other designs inside the plate. Do you do other designs on the utensil jars? Other oh than yes, fish? we do the same like dragonflies, uh, flowers, hummingbirds, uh, Noah's Ark, uh, dogwoods, what else? <laughs> a lot of, a lot of know, things. <laughs> when you said Noah's Ark, the very first thing that, that came to mind for me is I know that in uh, children's rooms, mm -hmm. the Noah's Ark, and put the, um, you know, they've got the toys that are like the pencils and the markers and the, sure, that kind of thing yeah, sure. uh, to put inside of it. That was the first thing that came to yeah, mind. So there's, this is a utensil jar, but it has a lot of other purposes. I get the feeling that you all really enjoy making things that are practical, useful items, <laughs> as well as pretty. I mean, oh, I there's no doubt that they're works of art, but they are useful and have uh, a lot of, versatility to yes, them. Well, that's where the real enjoyment is in them. And not just sitting them on a shelf, but actually using them every day. Well, and the, the quality that you put into it makes it something that you can use not just for a little while, but for years. Your, your plates, um, it, it definitely is something that's not something that's disposable. You can yeah. have it and hand it down. And, sure. and good quality, I know, I know people that has handed it down through several generations, kitchenware. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, because you get, you know, what better way to develop uh, bonds of family and friendship but over food? We've done it for years and we've done it with pottery for years. So that's exactly what you're doing as well. You're passing that heritage along and giving people a means to do that because emotions and uh, memories attach themselves to everyday things that we keep. That's right. That's good. Uh, now, when when you ship out something like this, how do you go about doing that? What's what's some of the methods and some of the safeguards you use so that if I order this, I get this, and I don't have to get I don't have to get a replacement. No, we have lots of experience <laughs> packing and shipping pots. We've been doing it for years, and we always send them through the mail. 
we found the U.S. mail is to be the best way for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, and do you have a insurance on them so that if they do, if the neighbor decides they like that box better than, <laughs> well, you know, it does happen. It does happen. It does happen. It does happen. And depending on the piece, we can insure it if, you know, if the customer mm -hmm. wants. Usually uh, they'll carry a certain amount of insurance anyway with just the postage. Um, but yeah, okay. we can insure them. We can do all kinds of special shipment. We mail yeah. things all the time. Okay. It's not a problem. So you're very used to shipping and doing yeah. a good job and getting that piece sure. to that person. We rarely have anything broken. Very, very rarely. Uh, well, and we're right across the street from the post office. So that makes it easy too. <laughs> that makes it? it very easy for you. <laughs> Uh, right now we've got a, a few pictures that we're going to show of your shop okay. and, and of things going on with you. And tell us about the pictures as they come up. I'll go okay. ahead and hand this off so we can. All right. Well. Oh, there we go. That's just that's the shot of the uh, entrance. Yep. And, and I'm... a nice summertime shot with all the greenery. Natural curtains. That's what that <laughs> is. <laughs> Natural curtains. <laughs> okay. And, and mm -hmm. what's the address of the shop? It's 124 East Avenue oh, East in Seagrove. Okay. It's just a little short street. Oh, that's, uh, that's a picture of our wood kiln. You can see the flames there. And uh, that's really at the beginning when it's not all that hot yet. That's why you uh, stand so close, right? Yeah, that's, yeah <laughs> exactly. And that's just the firebox. We're just actually preheating that kiln, getting it ready to, to really start cranking on it. And, um, and, and I'm Assuming that, that that's you standing there getting that's ready to me, do the yeah, work on that's it, huh? Me. And, and, uh, and my bib overalls, which I normally wear. I feel kind of funny without them today. <laughs> that, that's your work uniform, isn't it? That's my work uniform, yeah. And, and that's you again. What are we yeah. doing here? Here, this is uh, the kiln is, is white hot, and I'm just checking the, uh, I'm checking the fire there. And I, you can't see it, but I'm sweating from head to toe from all the stoke in the wood at that point. You, know. you, see the you don't need to go to a spa. You have no, no, no. Just, your just work sweat is going to build just in sweat spa. It out. That's it. <laughs> now, how many of us can say that we work in a spa? Oh, right? boy, yeah. But, you know, it's nice to get up in the morning and say, thank God it's morning instead of, oh, God, it's morning. Oh, yes. And, and, and your commute to work is probably a, a short one. I would say you all live probably Real pretty close. Real close, yeah. So... Uh, you and here's another and shot of the kiln, and uh, this is the same same kiln, same firing. And so who's that oh. over in the corner there? Oh. <laughs> uh, this is a this is a shot of our space at the North Carolina State Fair. In the village of yesteryear. Village. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really an honor for us to be in the village of yesteryear. It's uh, it's. Um, one of the hardest shows on earth to get into. And the jury process is really extreme. Um, we're, we're very honored to be in it, very honored to be a part of it. And we've been there going for 26 years now to the yeah. State Fair. This, yeah. this year coming up will be 27 years. And That's quite our, an accomplishment. Uh, well, it's, you, it's, just, it's just a great show. <laughs> Leave it uh, like that. The village is a, is a unique part of the state fair. We're there to educate the public. And so it's, a, it's a, a 10 days, 10 and a half days, and uh, it's a demonstrating show. We have to you know, explain what we're doing and teach people about what we're doing. It's not just you know, try to sell the pots. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just a, it's a fun time for us. We decided years ago that when we go to the fair, we're going to have fun. And, and that's we what do. we do. That's great. You know, if we went there to work, it'd be great. <laughs> it, it's still a lot of work. You may be it's having fun, but you can't you tell know, me it's not a lot are, of work, there too. There long 12-hour days. It's, it can be pretty tough. But okay. we have a good time there. Now, this is an item that is very different than anything that we've seen before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just going to let you tell me about it because it's got it's a, it's a lace-type pattern. Uh, with it's actually gotten holes in it. <laughs> That's the best way to say it. it's a lace pattern. Yeah. Uh, but there, it's, the holes are all the way through. It's not a trick of the camera. Those are really holes down into it. And uh, so, tell us about it and tell us what you know how it came to be and what you do with it. 
Well, first of all, I'd like to say that um, our son, Jeff McDowell, he is the one that turns almost all of the pottery now. David, he, he still turns, but Jeffrey, he's, he does most of our turning for us now, and he is an excellent turner, and he, he turns this on the wheel, and again, the next day, maybe a couple days, I will take like a wire loop tool and cut. It's not scraffito, it's called incising because I'm cutting directly into the clay and I do the fish design. And then after that, I use like a little Zacto knife and go in and cut out these holes. And of course, you know, like anything, after a while, you're more confident about doing it because you it, you have to do it at the right time or it's going to collapse. But um, this would just be a vase. That's what we would call it, a vase. And uh, it uh, some, I mean, of course, it's not going to hold water unless you put something like a glass tube or something down it like that if you are a fresh flower person. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Silk. Silk flowers and things. <laughs> they last That's longer. <laughs> when, you, when Deborah's carving this, the, the moisture content of the clay is extremely important. If it's too wet, it won't cut cleanly. If it's too dry, it's easy to crack it because of the way you're cutting all the way through it. Yeah, I, I can see where that would be. Your timing would be on, on both pieces just incredibly important. Absolutely. Now, this piece is TB004. And it's wood fired vase, $110. That's phone number to call them if you're interested in this is 336 873 7381. It's approximately 10 inches high and about 8 inches through this, this thick part. Through here, it's from here to here, is approximately 8 inches, maybe about 8 and a half but it's about 10 inches tall. And again, this is still glazed. So like you said, uh, yeah. it's not going to, if you've got a short little glass pitcher inside of it or something like that with water in it for fresh flowers, it's not gonna harm the piece. Well, no, it's not, not gonna all. absorb water. It, it is glazed throughout, um, but it's just a very, it's a strikingly pretty and so different with the lace pattern. Now, do you do, um, I know you've got this in fish, do you do the lace, what I'll call it lace just because of the holes in it, but do you do that with other different styles of pictures and items on it? We do it with like dogwoods and, and mm, sometimes hummingbirds, but mostly just the fish. And I'd like to also add that we call this seagrove fish. And this is where you're supposed to ask me why. Okay, why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> because um, some, you know, like a trout or a bass, they have certain markings that identify them. And I didn't want to take the time to make sure I had that just right. So I just freehand out the fish and just put different markings. If you'll notice, they have different ones. And just as I, you know, just the way I wanted to. It, I didn't really have a set pattern and I just decided to call them seagrove fish. Uh, it sort of was a joke to begin with, but now people actually call and order something with a seagrove fish. That's how something it started like that. And so we've had fun. We've had fun with that. And also people sometimes if we're out of town, they'll say seagrove. Is that, is that by the, is that on the coast? And, well, of course it isn't, but still, it's just... <laughs> they have their own fish anyway, don't we they? We can that's still right. call it seagrove fish, so and that that's what we would refer to it as. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing what you're saying about the fish. This one has the um, uh, indentations, like little half circles. Mm -hmm. This one actually has scales. like a fi the mm -hmm. scales and, mm -hmm. the, and the fins are, are mm -hmm. sharper. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, Mike's coming in on that for us. Yeah. <laughs> and as I turn it around, okay, this one has got lines down it. This one has got the uh, half circles. He's coming on in, so I'll hold it still so okay. he can do that. Okay, if you'll stop right about there, I can get a whole, almost get a whole fish in there. So you see this fish, and I'm going to turn it around a little bit more. And it looks like they've got uh, seaweed. They're swimming through seaweed. This one has the draping almost mm -hmm. on it. And if I come up, there's another one. It has like uh, 
just almost like little dots. Dots, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say pencil marks, and I don't know why pencil marks came to mind. <laughs> Having a daughter in school, it's <laughs> pencil marks. And you see, this is a different style fish. So you've got, and there's the ones we were talking about just a few minutes ago, talking about the scales. So they're all freehand. And they're, they're all, all freehand. Mm -hmm. They're all different. And I'm sure that from piece to piece and the mood of the day that you're in and what's flowing best for you kind of has a lot to do with it. It, it yes, does. Yes, ma'am. has a lot to do and with it. And then again, once it's in the fire, it can totally change. It can be, you can put two side by side in the wood kiln, same glaze, and it'll be totally different. Now, I noticed that uh, this is our second piece that's been with the, the bluer and green coloring. Do you all do a different coloring, or is that primary for this style? We do, we do a lot of different things, but the blue is the most popular. Okay. All right. And now we've got our next item. And this is... A face jar. <laughs> which are very popular nowadays. Mm -hmm. So who does the face jars? Jeff. <laughs> well, yeah, there again, one of our sons did this one, did this one, Jeff. And uh, it's a lot of fun. I think he's, you know. I was getting ready to say, <laughs> those mustaches yeah. here look a little just familiar. A little bit, just yeah. a little bit there, yeah. The face <laughs> jugs are, this is, um, um, our son Jeffrey does really neat things as far as folk art pottery goes. He mm -hmm. does also what we call cabin jugs where he builds a little cabin in there but face jugs is something lots of potters different potters do and and they do it their own style with yeah, sure. yeah, a several. lot of people collect and they're face all jugs. different oh, yeah. and david makes face jugs too but we didn't yeah. have one of we didn't have one of his to bring with us today well, this is <clears throat> tb005 it's a wood face jug and it's 75 dollars and that, again, is if you're trying to reach them by um, email, that's dbgarner1 at embarkmail.com. That's E-M-B-A-R-Q-M-A-I-L, embarkmail.com, TB005. You're absolutely right. I've, I've seen, in fact, uh, several business offices that I've been in recently, doctor's mm -hmm. offices and things, have shelves of, of the face jugs mm -hmm. because they're fun yes. and they're interesting. It's kind of funny there's no middle ground with face jugs. People either love them or they wouldn't have one. You know? And there's no <laughs> in-between. <laughs> there's no in-between at all. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it, you're right. I found that to be true too. They're, they're right. It, there's no, no middle ground. It's a love-hate relationship yeah. there. Yeah. But children have fun with them, you know. People that collect them have told me that their children will name them and they'll talk to them and joke <laughs> with them and stuff. Do they have a history behind them or is it just... Well, there's all sorts of folk tales about face jugs. Okay, you know, share, lot, share a, a couple of, of common them. ones with us. Um, mm -hmm. the, the most common is that they were made to store whiskey or poison in. Mm. And they put an ugly face on it to frighten away the children. <laughs> uh, personally, I think they were made more for fun than anything else. There's, you know, people think of jugs, especially the jugs made in Seagrove, as historically made for whiskey. Well, they were made for whiskey, but they were also made for vinegar and syrup and water and any liquid. And uh, I think sometimes potters, just out of boredom of making jugs, <laughs> would put a face on one and joke about it looking mm -hmm. like somebody's mother-in-law, you know, and have some fun with it. <laughs> the uglier, the more like the mother-in-law. Is the that the way like it worked? <laughs> yep, and the uglier, the better they sell, too. You know? <laughs> That's people, true. Most people want them really, really ugly. You know, and they're I, sometimes called ugly jugs. And I'm not sure if it's on the bottom of this one, but you, we try to put a scripture on the bottom. I'm not sure yeah, what that one is, but 1 Corinthians 127, because we always put that on the face jugs because it says that God chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And we just thought that just kind of fit that. <laughs> <laughs> It's because the smarter you are, the less sense they make. Yeah. If yep. you just take them at face value, they're fun. Yep. They're fun and they're a pleasure. Um, I'm, that's probably why some of the doctor's offices I've seen is because they are interesting for their clients to look yep. at. It takes their time up and it probably puts them in a better mood because they're, they're just silly. Yeah. They don't have to make sense. No, that's that's the all. fun part. And they're all different. There's no two alike. Just like people. <laughs> 
that's true. <laughs> One face is not the same as another face. <laughs> but that's TB005 Wood Face Jug, $75. Hi, welcome back. Um, Want to take a moment to talk to not just our uh, viewers out there, but the people that are potters. Want to give you an opportunity to join us. We'd love to have you on the show. Not just your opinions, which we do want. We want you to send those emails. And don't forget, that's info at thepotterychannel.com. But we also want to hear from you and get emails saying, we'd like to join you. We want to show your work. You work hard and you deserve the recognition. So what we'd like to do is anyone interested who'd like to come in and join us, uh, we'd like to do a show for you. We'd like to give you your first show free and let you see what we can do, let you be a part of the show, let you be a part of the process. And then, if you like it, we can work with anyone's budget and figure out how we can best help you, how we can get your number and your voice and your work out there for people to see. And now, if you don't happen to, you know, want to join us on that way, but you do need to have some advertising done, we need sponsors as well. So if you have an antique shop, if you have a hobby shop that has pottery, or a small pottery shop, you can be an independent potter, you can be with a shop, come talk to us. You, you know, you'll be right at home here. This is your target audience. These are people who love pottery. And that's what you do. Now, if you happen to be a supplier who has um, things that the potters themselves need, this is a great place for you to advertise because this is where they can find you. We will help you target your audience and make the most of your advertising budget. This is one of your very best places so that people who need what you have see it. So talk to us, contact us, let us know, and we would love to work with you. We want to make you a part of the process. We want your ideas, and we want your work. All right, and now we're going to come back to talking with you guys and seeing what we've got up next. We've got some more pottery. We've got lots of things you want to see. Now this is a little bit different coloring, and I see some of the different flowers that you do. Mm -hmm. I'll hold this up here. This has a, a, looks like the same chemicals maybe on it, but this time we've got a lot of green showing through and a darker blue. And this is just another good example of how the, 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 wood, the wood firing can affect the glazes and alter the glazes. Uh, this is basically the same glaze as what we had on the last piece. It is. But it looks very different <laughs> because totally that different. Look, mm -hmm. up in here is very dark, solid colors. I'm going to turn it so it's not quite in the those lights. It's a very dark, it's a very blue, and then comes into a mossy green, which is different. I mean, we had a much different mm -hmm. texture almost look to it. And this has an awful lot of fine work on it. It looks like fine work. Wildflowers. Just, and just wildflowers, but there's a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of detail work in it. And mm -hmm. this is TB006 Wood Fired Pitcher. And it's $55. And I'm going to turn it up so you can see the shape. So it has a nice fancy little. And I'm assuming that when you do this, this is done by hand. Mm -hmm. This is all yes. shaped. Everything's by hand. Everything's by hand. And, and at what point of the process do you make the shapes? <clears throat> well, it's, it's round when we stop the wheel turning. And at that point, while the clay is still nice and soft, we'll actually make the spout. So it's all very While it's still manual work. work. Mm -hmm. It's all hands-on. Everything all about hands it is hands-on. Hands -on. Yep. There are 40, 45 steps to each piece. Wow. And you know, each one is critical. A lot of them are real simple steps. But if they're not done right, you've ruined it. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. <laughs> Every one of those steps is important. It's very important, yes. And uh, I know I was looking at this handle. It's, a, it's very smooth. I can see a wide um, pattern up at the top. I'm assuming that's impartial for strength. Yeah. But so that if you're mm -hmm. using this as a, a pitcher out of a refrigerator with sweet milk tea. or tea. <laughs> oh, of course, it's, it's the tea. South, it's sweet tea. Um, or as a, this is also, uh, my grandmother actually had one that she put on a windowsill mm -hmm. and put water in it. And that's what she watered her plants with. Sure. Because plants should not be watered with cold water. 
That's something my grandmother handed down to me. <laughs> it, it shocks them. So she would take pottery, and she said that it got, in her words, just the right temperature. She set it on the window sill and let the sun warm it. And she said in the pottery, it kept it at a nice room temperature that it got just right for the plants. And since my mother and my grandmother had a house full of them, I trust them that they knew what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. But this is this would fit well like we said with tea or milk uh addition to the you know a table if you're having guests over that's a that's a very decorative nice way um the handle as we were talking about very secure but it's also very smooth and very ornately done and i like the way the glaze has come down almost like in a fan pattern that turned mm -hmm. out very pretty with this i'm gonna i don't know if we can see that or not i'm gonna hold it really still and see if we can do it. Okay. And if you'll hold right there, I'm gonna move it around just a little bit. And you can see the fan pattern. And up inside of it, ah, there we go, we got that. Right down in here, you can see a fan pattern that comes out. And of course, that handle has the green and blue, rich colors. Now, this one is very dark, very solid. And as I turn it around, you'll see a, a nice decorative little white, blue light streak down through there. And how, how do you do that on purpose? Can you get that on purpose where you get that pattern? <laughs> Every wood kiln is different. And sometimes pieces sitting at the top can be different from the ones that are in the bottom. But that's... They all vary. Just, all they the all candle, vary. They vary. It's just a same, present when you open it up and you see what it's been given. That's right. right. Same glaze, but it could be sitting at a different spot and get look totally different. And I noticed on this one that you managed, uh, as you cut the flowers into the surface, the actual blue is coming down through the, mm -hmm. the stems. So that's a beautiful piece. Okay, right now we're going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to have some fun and watch a video about the shop. I'll let you go ahead, David, and introduce this and tell us what we're about to see. Uh, this, is a, this is a little clip about the North Carolina Pottery Center that was filmed there, and part of it has uh, a fellow potter, Tom Gray, from Seagrove in it. Tom's a great potter, and he needs to be on this program, so <laughs> we'll go from there with it. Right? <laughs> we'll see what we can do about that. Okay. Looking for something decorative for your home? You might want to consider a piece of pottery, and for many that just means one place, the legendary community of Seagrove. This small town in North Carolina's South Central Piedmont, with nearly 100 potters calling it home, is well known for its fine pottery. It all started some two centuries ago when someone placed a lump of clay on a foot-operated turntable and molded art that is now known the world over. Anyone that gets interested in pottery soon learns about the Seagrove area. I mean, this is a great place. This is, this is a great place. There's so much tradition here. Uh, this, it, if you look at some of the historical pieces here in, in the center, you'll see some just fabulous work. And, and the contemporary work as well here is, is wonderful. It's wonderful. There's even a special place dedicated to the potter's art, the North Carolina Pottery Center right in the heart of town. Here you can see over 800 pieces on permanent display and learn the history and the uniqueness of Seagrove before you set out on a search for that one certain piece of the potter's art. The potters here are world famous for their artistry. People from literally all over visit this area each year to purchase plates, jugs, crocks, bowls, pictures, and other items created from the local clay. If you really want your pottery to have a special or unique feel to it, why not watch the item being made? It's, it's, it's the kind of things that, that enhance your life. When you get up in the morning, if you have your coffee in a handmade mug and you've met the person that made it, you've seen part of the process, it really, it, it's, it's a much better way to start your day than a piece of plastic that came from who knows where. And <laughs> I think our, our society has really gotten away from the throwaway society thing. But folks are, are really reached a point that they want things in their home that they enjoy using and things that 
that make their life better. And potters have always understood that. It's the, it's the simple bowl. It's the simple container. It's the, it's the things that make you smile when you use them. It's not just the potter's artistry that draws them to Seagrove. There's another reason why so many of them now call this area home. It's the makeup of the soil. Well, here there's a, there's a clay near the surface, an orange clay that's ideal for earthenware, and then under that is a blue-gray clay that's, that's wonderful for the stoneware for the high temperature work. Um, it, it turns well. Uh, it's, it's just a wonderful clay, all, all around wonderful clay here. The local artists make the process look simple. Just watch Tom Gray, a potter who moved to Seagrove nearly 20 years ago. And most potters back then, you know, 200, 250 years ago, even I'll say as recent as, as 50 years ago, they were farmers first and potters second. They only made pots when they couldn't, didn't have anything to do on their farm. And today it's just a matter of economics. I mean, Seagrove is known as uh, pottery capital of the United States. More potters per capita here than anywhere else. And it's the longest ongoing pottery tradition. And that's why I moved here in 1990. People who know pottery know Seagrove. I mean, just this week in my shop, I've had people from South Africa, from France, from all across the United States. Uh, it's not unusual. I mean, any country you could think of, I've had folks there. Seagrove, a little bit of clay, some water, and skilled hands combined with a rich 200-year-old tradition. You know, you can go to it. You can go to a gallery anywhere in the world and buy a piece of ceramic art, but you're not going to meet the person that made it, most likely, and you're not going to see it made. You're not going to see any part of the process. Here it's always open studio. You walk in, there's probably a pot of turning right there in the showroom, and that, that is really uh, what Seagrove's always been to me. It's more, it's, it's more of an experience. It's more of a treasure hunt. You, you, you take home a treasure, but you remember the experience. That's great. That's awesome. Thank you for, for sharing all of that with us. And uh, we hope that you all enjoyed the video. Uh, we do appreciate you bringing it. We have some more things. So we're going to start with a style you have not seen before. And this is called horsehair. And I can already tell you something that's new besides the techniques on here is the bottom. That is a new style that's shaping. Mm -hmm. So I've got so many questions I don't quite know where to start <laughs> with this. So. It's probably going to be in the wrong order, but I'm just going to start asking questions. And then anything I okay. forget, you fill in for me. Tell me about this bottom and the shapes, and you can tell how it's not a, um, a regular round circle. It has texture to it. It has a pattern to it. Well, it started as a round circle, and then I cut it away to create the design in it, to create the pattern. Uh, while it was at a leather hard stage, it actually has fairly soft leather stage um, and then we smooth it you know, this type of the horsehair has to be extremely smooth because there's really no glaze on it we burnish each piece we rub it slick and shiny before it's ever fired while it's still greenware while it's still extremely fragile we burnish it okay <coughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this upright carefully and now, as you can see, and I think we're going to have a close shot, I'm going to turn it around where there's a lot of pattern to be seen. And this is TB007 Horsehair Vase, $145. I'm going to go ahead and tell you again, if you're interested in any of these pieces, go ahead, don't wait. If you're interested and you want this, and you want this specific piece, give them a call and let them get it out to you. First of all, you don't want to wait to own it. And second of all, if you wait too long, someone else will own it. Mm -hmm. That you don't want to do either. So give them a call at 336-873-7381 and tell them that you want TB007, the horsehair vase, $145. T 
tell me about everything. Tell me, you can tell okay. me about this. I don't even know what questions to ask. Okay. Well, with the horsehair, we're, we're in the second firing. We actually bring the piece out of the kiln red hot. And while it's red hot, we lay the hair on it. And you can see that when the hair hits that hot surface, it twists and curls and burns into it and leaves these lines. Um, we do a lot of real special pieces with this too. We do a lot of pieces with someone's, their horse's hair. We do a lot of memorial pieces for folks with, uh, with their horse's hair, or we've done a lot for a large animal vet, so have a special commemorative piece made for a customer that, if they've had to put down a horse. Uh, we've done them with, oh, we've done them with all kinds of hair. We've done them with dog hair, cat hair, mule, zebra, human hair. <laughs> well, I can see where these would be very unique. A lot of people want uh, cremation jars. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, <clears throat> so I can see where, you know, especially for a, a beloved horse or as you said, other well, hairs, I can see where <clears throat> that would be. Um, the horse, the horse has a lot of ashes, but we've done a lot well, of them. Yeah, for, you can. I wouldn't for, say all of them will be in this one. <laughs> but we've done a lot of them. For but you people. can say part. You know what I'm saying? Just a, yep. a sampling. Yeah. 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 But we've done a lot for human ashes. Uh, mm -hmm. We've done a lot for dogs and cats and different things like that. But the 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 main thing with that is we do them with that uh, with that animal's hair. And I noticed that we've got, and you'll see in a little bit different colors. So yes. what mm -hmm. is this color referred this to? This is as? our amber. Uh, we do this by spraying it with iron while it's still red hot. That's just as fast as we burn the hair into it and that has to be done really quick because it's only the right temperature for really just a few seconds. As soon as we finish burning the hair and we spray the iron on it and the pot is still red hot at that point and it, it takes the iron, uh, it, it, the iron will change in uh, colors, uh, different colors like the rim here you see is a lighter shade It's because the rim is cooled off. So the pot's not accepting the iron. Um, the cooler it is, the less it accepts it. And of course, the thickness of the iron, the intensity of the iron can change the color too. That's, I can see where you were talking about the different shading. Mm -hmm. uh, that also gives it part of its uniqueness because mm -hmm. you're not gonna be able to get this shade, that place, by, you're gonna have to get what the pot does. Mm -hmm. You have to pretty much let the pot decide where it's cool and what shade it is. And you can get the color, but you can't decide the exact shade, yeah. can you? And the color will vary quite a bit. But that's um, such a, a unique process. Now we have a couple more pieces with this style that I want to show you in a few minutes. But we have a video right now that's going to give you a little bit more information about this process and how it happens. Um, yeah, in this video, I'm. I'm turning a pot in, in our shop and talking to a customer about the horse. So <laughs> you can learn what the customer learns because that's what you are too. Enjoy the video. <laughs> now the horse hair ones. Uh, uh -huh. What you just do there? Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, that's just the clay that you're going to start. The horse hair ones, what, you put the, the hair on, hair at a time, it says. When do you do that? Right, like now, after you? No, I take it out. I reach in the kiln when it's red hot. I take it out. I reach in with tongs and pull out one pot at a time. And while it's hot, I literally lay the hair on it and burn it into it. You burn each, each hair and then pull it back out and put another one on? No. Yeah, then set it to the side and pull another one out. Oh, it burns because it's so hot. Yeah. So then exactly. you just take the hair off. And, is that right? The hair just vaporizes. Oh. And the hair's gone. Gone. Well, they're gorgeous. Thank you. They're a lot more involved than in the other pieces. What? They're a lot more involved than the other pieces. So. Yeah, I bet they are. We have to burnish each one, rub them sweet and shiny before we ever buy them. Well, I was here a couple of years ago and bought another pot from uh -huh. I would have liked to have uh, got one of the horse hair ones, but my budget didn't. <laughs> well, I had to fly back on an airplane. It was kind of hard. Yeah. 
But I remembered you and I had to come back to see you. You've got a lot more of them now. Well, we just did a firing, so I've got quite a few of them to choose from. Welcome back. Thank you for that video. Um, this is a process that even those of us that have seen a little bit of pottery have not been introduced to before, so I find this fascinating, the fact that you're actually incorporating uh, organic material in there to create a decorative effect is, uh, it's kind of, a, I don't know, it's just kind of amazing to me. It's one of those things that's like, I never thought of that. There's not. Every time someone comes in the shop, they're, this is usually what they first ask about. They'll say, how did you get those black lines on there? And then, of course, I mean, you know, you can't go into all the detail, but uh, if, if our son Robert is there, he's the one that does the horsehair application for us and the fire, and, and he's really good at explaining it. But um, it's, it's really neat because when we take it out of the kiln and drop that hair on there, it actually burns into the pottery. So the hair burns away, you're seeing like a carbon that's Just, left. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, this, this color here, this aqua color or turquoise, it's uh, something new for us. And uh, uh, it's, it's really been a good seller for us. It's a popular color and it's really a beautiful combination. And this has a lot of pieces 
of the uh, the horsehair throughout mm -hmm. it. It's got a lot, and I notice this one has a really dark line through there. What causes the line to be so much darker yeah, than the other? The, the, the thickness of the hair, there's multiple strands there, and it's the thickness as well as the temperature. The temperature is so very critical in the horsehair. Uh, if, it's, if it's a little cool, it'll get a lighter shade of, of line, or if the hair is thinner, or the diet of the animal is a little different. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of things affect it. Uh, it's, there's just so many variables going um, on there that it's, uh, well, there's this a lot one, going on. This one is TB008 Horsehair Vase, $65. And you said this is sort of an aqua. If somebody called and wanted an aqua, aqua. you would know. Mm -hmm. This is about seven inches tall, maybe about seven and a half, but it's basically about seven inches from side to side. And uh, you know, one of the things that strikes me, we always say there's no two alike, but this one, <laughs> this style, it's an absolute guarantee there's no two identical. Absolutely. Because you don't know about, there's so many factors involved. You can't make them the same. These will never be mass produced identically, not this style. So this is, so we had amber, and we have the aqua. Aqua. And now we're going to see another piece that's entirely different. Mm -hmm. Even got a different something other than hair. <laughs> ah. One thing I'd like to say about this one right off is I, this is a beautiful, beautiful shape. It's probably my favorite shape. I call it high shoulders. I have my own pottery language, but this, uh, again, our son Jeff made this, turned this piece. David does the grooves and stuff. But this is done with wild turkey feathers. Oh, so. <laughs> wow. And you can see the shape of the feather there. Uh -huh. Yes. We started doing the, the turkey feathers years ago for, um, we did a couple of pieces for the North Carolina Wild Turkey Federation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what, we're basically the same thing as the horse hair. While the pot is red hot, we lay the feather right on the red hot pot and it burns in and leaves that imprint. And uh, wild turkey feathers is probably the most popular feather we use. We also use emu feathers or pheasant. We've done them with uh, parrot feathers, all kinds of things. Uh, I really like the wild turkey feathers. They're, they're a lot of fun to work with. Well, it, uh, the coloring on this probably is uh one of the things I like so well is the contrast. Yes. Because you got the dark, um, you've got the very dark feather remnants because mm -hmm. it's the carbon. And again, I would say mm -hmm. it's not the feather, it's the results of the right, feather. Right, right. And what color is this? How do you get this sort of a creamy? Well, we, we, we put a white clay on top of each one of them uh, and burnish it, rub it slick and shiny. And that gives us this this, this white, con um, and it's a perfect contrast with the black. And it's really the more traditional horsehair technique is the mm -hmm. black and white. Mm -hmm. And there again, it's, it's a lot of folks know uh, it's their favorite because the black and white is going to always be, you know, mm -hmm. always be in style. That's true, and it will match almost any decor that you exactly. want to put it in. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't matter whether the feathers are, you were saying the different kinds of feathers you use, it doesn't really matter because it's not the actual feather. It doesn't matter if they're what color they are, it doesn't matter. They all burn uh, black. They all burn black. However, some will do better than the others. I know I've yeah. heard uh, our son Robert say that he doesn't like to use the chicken feathers. They just don't seem to separate. Sometimes we use, um, uh, emu feathers. We didn't bring one with them. Uh, no. the, the emu feathers are really, really pretty. They kind of make a V shape on them. But uh, Robert's gotten really good at applying this horse hair and the feathers. He's gotten <laughs> gotten pretty good at it. He enjoys doing it. He does well, a good job. Well, when you enjoy something and you do it a lot, you get very good at it. Yep. And he's definitely gotten very good at it. Definitely. Uh, a lot of patterns. And I, I see where the, I mean, some of these you can see immediately are feathers. Mm -hmm. Others, you um, you actually see almost a cartoon shape in them where they've done, <laughs> where they've done their own thing. 
But, and again, I can, I can feel down in here that these are glazed. So there could be, this is glazed are, just at the top. No. These, okay. are, these are a low temperature earthenware. They are porous. Water will seep through this type of ware. These are a form of raku, okay. which is a fast fired earthenware. So these would not be good to use for water bases and things because the water would absorb no. in them. And right. no, no, not food safe or not food safe or, or dishwasher. These or are yeah. but to the enjoy. Ones, <laughs> if, if someone that enjoys cut flowers, if you get one with a large mouth that they can put a glass in mm -hmm. to hold the water, right. it's no problem. But they wouldn't want to put the the moisture directly to it. Right. These it are more ornamental. It will slowly but surely leak if you yeah. did that. So. You know, we always warn people we don't want them to ruin the great grandmother's table. <laughs> well, you wouldn't want them to, to ruin the pottery either. Well, it wouldn't. So, this is TB009 Wild Turkey Feathers Vase, $95. Okay, and our very next item, and this is a little bit different too. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you explain, um, so explain it as we, we bring it up. And this is another decorative, but this one is water safe. Yep. These are, this is called an Ichabana. And uh, again, this is the horse hair, hair uh, pottery that we've used on top. We, we do make them, sometimes our daughter-in-law Tina will make them a little bit different style but this is something we've started doing with a horsehair. And they have like a little metal pin frog on the inside. And so, and they will hold, this will hold water because we have like a cup under it. Ah, uh, and pronounce that again for me, please. Ikabana. Ikabana. <laughs> I knew I wouldn't get it right, so I wanted you to do it. It's a, it's a traditional Japanese style of uh, flower arrangement. It's always done with threes. Uh, three flowers, three sticks, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I like them because you can do a quick arrangement and they always look good. Yeah. And this is TB010 or TB010 horsehair Ikebana face. Ikebana, very good. Right. Twenty-two dollars. It's uh, again, it's also in the classic colors that has the cream with the, uh, the black and, and the horse, horse hair, hair in mm -hmm. it, uh, $22. Give them a call at 336-873-7381, Ikebana face. And do you all do these in multiple colors or just primarily yes, this Yes, we do one? them in all the, like the amber or the, um, or the turquoise. Um, we even have a shade of pink. Um, and a lavender shade. We're and a lavender on. shade. Yeah, too. I've se I've seen the lavender yeah. shade. That's a that's a very pretty shade too. In fact, uh, uh, Mike has actually zoomed in a little bit. Oh, we okay. That. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That that little vase is the lavender color, and that one is. They can just how give much? us a call. I'm sorry. Uh, probably twenty eight dollars, and uh, that was turned by our daughter in law Tina McDowell. She she does uh, all the little small vases for us, and she does a good job. It's a, I like the uh, lavender, especially for springtime. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, flower arrangement, that's something that you can put in a, in a small little niche in a place, like a, a shelf on the middle of your table. Uh, you can, now do you do these in different sizes, or just this is the typical size? This is the typical size for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we do have another item. Oh, yeah, we do have some others. Mike is showing uh, another in the aqua color in the back, uh, which is the same color as we had on TB008. This is another one that Mike is showing up there. Okay. So you do have, but primarily you've got the four different colors. Oh. Yeah. So, um, we do have, I'm going to go ahead and move this one off, and we have a little bit different style, a different type of item is our last item of the evening. Uh, it's a little bit different mm -hmm. and a little bit fun. We were talking earlier about things that you can hand down, oh, and yes. this is definitely one of those things. Okay, <laughs> and we're going to let you introduce this item. 
Well, this is one of our baby plates. Uh, these have been made in Seagrove for forever. Potters usually did them for their own children. Mm -hmm. uh, we started doing them for the public a long time ago. And uh, what, what folks do is they just call us and make an appointment and then bring the baby in. And while they're there, we turn the plate and press their hands and feet into it. And then we'll come back and put a, put a band of blue around it and Deborah will carve the name and birthday into that. And then we special sign the back. Sometimes folks, we usually put a scripture there. That, um, Children are a gift from God, they're his reward. Yeah, and I noticed that you've got this whole back mm -hmm. is, is just, uh, I'm hoping that the camera can pick it up and hold it real still. That's okay. We, uh, we'll put the name of the shop and the scripture, uh, the, the date the plate was made. Uh, sometimes folks want the baby's birth weight and birth, you know, things like that on there. And um, the date, I see that you've got the date we on got this the date one. the we made it. Mm -hmm. And this is TB011. Baby plate, seventy-five dollars, and and these are all, of course, uh, custom-made, special order. You have to bring the baby, so yeah. you know. we do them by appointment. Yeah, yeah. We and, do and them I know by this, appointment. This one has little trains, yeah. um, so I'm assuming that you know that you might could do a different thing oh, if it was sure. a girl. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Things. With little girls, we do a lot of morning glories or dogwood blossoms, that sort of thing. The trains seem to be the perfect thing for little boys. Absolutely. You know? And uh, yeah. they're so precious. I mean, the baby's never that size again. Oh, no, they're not. No, that's, that's definitely uh, something that's a keepsake. Absolutely. And it's an excellent uh, present for... Um, Mother's Day, Christmas. Uh, yeah, Christmas for grandparents Absolutely. and, and mm -hmm. things like that. So, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Oh, I'm sure it is. I, I'm sure it is, and it's probably very satisfying when they come to pick it up and they're thrilled oh, with yes. it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> definitely is. Well, it definitely sounds like you all have fun with it. Um, it sounds like you do uh, quite a business down in Seagrove. You've been doing it for so many years. And uh, certainly would invite you all to contact them. As you can see their phone number, 336-873-7381. And uh, also you can send them an email if you'd like to. And that is um, dbgarner1 at embarkmail.com. Uh, give them a call, give them an email. Uh, if you're in the area, you'll definitely want to see it. There are some pieces that are definitely unique and need to be seen in person, I'm sure. Oh, yes. So we hope that you've had fun today and we hope that you've learned. I've done, learned an awful lot today about some of our new different uh, styles that we have and we do appreciate it. And sure. like to once again thank everyone that makes the show possible and that would be our director producer, Jim Brawls. On camera we've got Mike Politoski and the behind the scenes grip and everything type person, my daughter, Alex Brawls. Thank you all again. And this is Turn and Burn Pottery with David and Deborah Garner. Thank you.